edition of the Two Dudes Podcast. I'm Rick. That's Kevin. We have a really good one here for you today. Kev, how are you doing, my man? Man, I'm good. Just feeling sluggish today for some reason. I'm good. Sluggish? Bro, you should have been out there running them five miles with me earlier today. I wish I could. I really do. What do you mean you wish you could? Oh, you're, you're not in Kansas City, so therefore I can't. It's called a virtual run. Okay. Well, you figure out how to do it virtually, I'll consider it. You just both do it at the same time. Oh, that's, that's no good. I, I need you next to me, pushing me, talking shit, so. Oh, okay. I'm going to remember that then. I'm already going to be talking shit to y'all when uh, my team uh, splits at the best with uh, the Chiefs and... Uh, your brother ends up buying me uh, a nice, cool, alcoholic beverage, or actually an entire bottle. But that's a whole nother thing. We will circle back to that once uh, training camps open up, because I want the uh, people to make sure that they know. And if you don't know, check out this card right here. It's going to pop up, and that'll link you to our episode last week. Lots of bets were made, and uh, hearts will be broken come football season people will be drunk. That's all I'm going to say about that. Yeah, that'll be good. I'm trying to be a better person, Kev. I'm trying to be better. Um, like I said, I ran five miles a day. It's no biggie. I'm, I've always been a runner. But, you know, I've started working out a lot more, being a lot more intense with it. Um, I'm trying my best to cut back on sugar. That's the hard part. Sugar is yeah. the that crack be calling me, man. Um, and it doesn't help that the wife is a good cook. But side note, I don't eat a lot of vegetables. And she's trying to get me to eat more vegetables. All right. So she asked me if I wanted some, uh, what was it? Was it zucchini or something like that? I forget the hell what it was. No, no, it wasn't zucchini. Um, some sort of vegetable that, that I thought was green beans. I thought she made green beans and smothered it with cheese. You know, I'm eating that. She's like, so I thought you didn't want that. I'm like, what? I eat green beans. That's not green beans. More asparagus, was it? Yes. Yes, it was asparagus. Thank you. I could not tell the difference. Bro, she cut it up. She smothered it with cheese. It was looking good. So, yes, I would run from asparagus a week ago. Today, not so much, as long as she continues to smother it with cheese. Don't That's know if I'm ready to eat it without cheese, but until then, hats off to her. You need to eat it without cheese. Why? So you can get a taste of it. Smothering it with cheese defeats the purpose because cheese has a value. You need to eat it without jeans. I'll work my way there. Until then. Okay. You know. Work your way there. <laughs> um, also, I'm trying to drink a lot more water. You know, I, I admit that I don't drink as much water as I should. Um, in doing so, that means cutting back on uh, a lot of the soda and um, the uh, even the sports drinks, like Gatorade and Powerade. Um, I will have those. <laughs> especially after a run, you know, replace the minerals and electrolytes. Uh -huh. I thought it would be hard to not have access to a uh, pop, but I'm a big fan of orange Coke. Really not. Orange Coke isn't even on the shelves anymore. So I'm like, what the fuck? You know, it's but, not. Um, no, I've heard different things. I've heard that uh, Coca-Cola may, uh, discontinue it. I've heard that it won't be back until the end of summer. And, you know, I could probably drink Pepsi, but I'm going to use this as a sign to stay away from it. I did have a whole bunch of Pepsi last week, but you know, what can I say? Like I said, crack be calling. But I am trying so much uh, better to be better. And it's, it's going to be a journey. So I'll have to update you on it every week and see how things are going. 
obviously the running part's easy. I set out to run three miles today, ended up doing five. Piece of cake. I can do that in my sleep. It's these other things that have to compound and it's it's all part of the process. I want to become better. And it doesn't matter what you want to be better at, whether it be physical stuff, mental stuff, uh, a little bit of both. It, it's, uh -huh. it's all about stepping out of the comfort zone. And that's what I intend to do. All right. Let's uh, start with some news, man. I read this today. Um, I hate this. Meek Mill and Jay-Z, they decided to get Robert Kraft a birthday present. They spent, for his 80th birthday, lots of money on a Bentley for him. First yeah, all, special edition. This man can buy his own Bentley. Did you see the video? No, do I need to see the video? Tell me about the video. No, what it is, Meek Mill, Jay-Z, and Michael Rubin, who owned part of the 76ers, they got it for his birthday. And apparently, the car is in so high demand, or they got it in such low production, it's hard to get. But they were able to get it, and they got it for his birthday. I don't know what Meek Mills really got to do with that, because he ain't got money like them. But, you know, I guess you got to have that one broke friend. So. Maybe he did all the leg work and uh, Jay-Z and old boy uh, put the bill. He probably put a little in there so they would mention his name. Like that one friend that he that drink out $30 worth of liquor while only put in five. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's where he come in. I don't know. I just think that, you know, the, the world is fucked up as it is, you know. How about the or if they spend some of that money on underprivileged kids or sick people in the hospital. See, and I hate when people say that shit. Why? They all probably got a charity or something or something they're doing. At some point, let them spend their money how they want to. Whether it's drugs, bitches, you oh, know. Uh, let, let me back up. I have flight. no problem with them spending their money in any way they want to. Let's not make it newsworthy, though. Well, that's Dude. the thing. That's not them doing it. That's us doing it. That's a simple video that probably was on one of their uh, IG pages. I got to spread this around. They made it newsworthy. So that's one thing to where it goes back to how you can't police other people's kids. How you can't police adults, let alone other people's kids. Because who cares? He got out of the car. Big fucking deal. You know, but it made the news like it was uh, the baddest thing ever. Yeah, I'm just, I, I guess, but I, I don't want to hear about this shit. Maybe that's because, you know, I don't have the Bentley and I don't have the millions. It'd probably be different if I did, but I'm, I'm just a different I already know me. Even if I had it, I wouldn't buy that car. I, I agree. I'm the kind of person, if I had it, I wouldn't have it. In other words, I'd be spreading that around to my family because uh, I know that when I make it, the people that were a part of that, they coming up with me. Nah, I ain't going hammer broke. I ain't going hammer broke. No. I'm, I'm going to take care I'm of I'm not going to have a posse or anything. But there will be percentages doled out to each and every person along the way because I want to show my appreciation because without them, it wouldn't be a me. Don't get it twisted. I'm going to keep enough to make sure that I'm comfortable. But I don't need... That's me. I, don't I need, need to be more than comfortable. I need to be more than comfortable. I need to make sure my kids is good and their kids is good. I'm not breaking my neck for everybody. Well, see, my, my kids and their kids are part of those percentages, so they'll be taken care of. I'm going to have a list. If you didn't make the list, hey, you should have did more. Sorry for you. Have a free keychain. Then I'm let you go about your business. See, that's only, really better than me. I wouldn't need to get out the free keychain. See, can you just go to Dollar Tree, get them for next to nothing? Um, 
Only thing I would have fancy is my car, my green car, and that's a Lamborghini Countach. Cool I get one of those, and that'd be it. Everything else be, you know, some nice cars, but it's not gonna be anything to six figures. Fucking Lamborghini Countach, a, a 2000 model, still over 100,000. That's fucking insane. That's 20 years old. Hmm. But that body type is still dope as hell. And, and, and hopefully you're not doing any uh, illegal activities so that you don't lose all that money. The reason why I bring that up, Kells is in the news again. R. Kelly's lawyers dropped out uh, of his case with just two months to go before the uh, trial starts. That's not looking good for him. I thought the trial already happened. Then we yeah. he been that, jail that, just that was all pre-trial stuff. Wow, so they doing... The, the actual trial starts in August. And uh, the lawyer said that uh, they don't feel that they're experienced enough to perform to the best of their abilities for him. So they are withdrawing from the case, which means Kells needs to find new representation. That's some whole shit. That and lets you way, know. The charges are sex trafficking, so they will put him under the jail. And he ain't did no sex trafficking. That's what makes it so bad. But I'll let you know, the lawyers... They done got threatened. They run it for their life. They on some real bitch shit. Well, here's the thing, though. You said he hasn't. He had sex with underage girls. He gave them items and money. That's all the government needs to say sex trafficking. That's all they well, need. But the sad part about it, parents were involved. That, that's that's, that's, that's why I elevated the sex trafficking. I'm saying, but you ain't suing the parents. You going after him. Like he the fucking kingpin. He can't even fucking read. Can't even... The nigga thought he could fly. Uh, now, it's one thing to, to be going up for that. Uh, he might have a cellmate. Apparently, there was a uh, former doctor here. He's been, he's been arraigned. He will get 22 years for trafficking girls ages 12 to 15 for sex. Now, what's wrong with that picture? He's a doctor. He should be making plenty of money already. And he's getting ready to go off the river for 22 years. So a lot of sick people out world? there. A lot of sick people out there. It just What they got just ain't enough. They need more. Speaking of needing more, today is the 40th anniversary of Raiders of the Lost Ark. And, uh, Today also happens to be the sign where uh, they begin shooting Indiana Jones 5. I'm of two minds on this because I love Raiders of the Lost Ark. I really did. I wasn't too keen on that last one. I thought, hey, uh, Indy's a little too old for this shit. Yet and still, they're making a fifth one. What are they going to do to convince me that this 70-year-old man can still go off on these crazy adventures. This is a uh, Green screen does wonders. <laughs> green screen does wonders, and they bring a shot of bow back. No, they are not. They slipped on that one. Need to bring my boy back. I think he's the reason why the uh, last movie failed. Uh, it's just they did. The, the The problem is the reason why that last movie failed, and a lot of movies fail like that is you got to give a transition of introducing a younger character that's going to take over the franchise. You can't just throw a movie out there and then here's a replacement uh, what third of the way into the movie. That's one thing I get Bad Boys 3. You kind of got a feeling that Martin's going to go off into the sunset and it's going to be Will and his son or Will directing his son on what to do. But the thing was, they introduced you to Will's son in the movie, but they didn't have him take over the movie. You know what I'm saying? It ended with you want to get out of here? It's what you can do. So, like, they did a good job of introducing the new character. That's where Big Mama's House 2 fell. One, because we didn't need a second one. But two, Brandon T. Jackson, you made him the whole damn focal point of the movie instead of it being Martin when it was Martin's movie. You got to ease people if new characters in, is going to take over. You can't just let them take over. 
Because every time it happens, it ends up being a flop. Well, I like what you said about bad, uh, bad boys. I, I'm, I'm liking where the direction that franchise is going. If any of the producers or the director out there is listening to this podcast, please, please, please don't go in the direction of the Fast and the Furious. Too much over the top, too much BS. And I know F9's getting ready to go out, come out, but uh, from what I've seen on these commercials, it's 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 gonna suck, but people seem to eat that shit up. I mean, I saw Don't a commercial for yesterday. Fast talk. Fast talk. Say what? Fast and furious is about fast cars and explosions. That's all it's about. That's what you get. Yeah, but I don't want to see cars flying into space. That's a bit too much. But that's what it's about. It's all about the car doing something crazy. And some unnecessary fight scene. Speaking of craziness and fight scenes, don't forget tomorrow, which for the people listening to this podcast would be yesterday, um, Loki comes out on Disney+. Plus. Gotta check that out. The villain everybody loves. Yeah. Him. Okay. I'm hoping it's going to be out, so. I, I think it will be. I think it will be. I think that these shows are getting better as they do it. And, and Marvel puts their uh, movie money behind this, even though the TV shows. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, Sunday night, there was a couple boxing matches. So I just want to get your thoughts on Chad Ocho Cinco jo- Johnson uh, and his fight. And I also, do you think it's time for Floyd Mayweather to hang him up? First, props to Chad. He held his own. That was the wildest damn fight I've seen in a long time. They was just strictly, we throwing punches. We ain't playing no defense. We fight like two kids on the block having fun. Dude got the luckiest knockout I've ever seen. If anybody's seen the video, he got a knockout when him and Chad were separating from each other. And he got, he swung a quick one on Chad to where even the official was like, I ain't even tell y'all to separate you swing. So it's like he got a cheap one. And that's what took Chad down. Chad got right back up. So I give Chad props. Not saying he could be a boxer, but he held his own. All right. So what do you think about Floyd? Floyd? Hey, you, you, did you watch the link I sent you? I have not. That link explains it all. Floyd a bad motherfucker. Y'all you know, some of y'all don't care about me, don't watch. See, you don't like how I don't watch. Wait, the was, end, that the YouTube link? was that the YouTube link? Uh, no one YouTube, it was an IG. Okay, I, 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 saw, I seen that. I think I was about saying. I, I, really, I it, it may be YouTube, IG, one of the two. But like you said, my kids can't eat critical acclaim, but they can eat off these dollars. Patches on my shorts. 30 million a patch. Take home from this fight, $100 million. Yeah, and let me say this. I have no problem with a man, I don't care what his age is, working for you. If he wants to work until he's 80, if he's still if he's still able to, I say go for it. Absolutely. Um, I have no problem with it. I mean, that's like somebody saying, Kevin... You shouldn't be co-hosting this podcast anymore. You should hang him up. What the fuck? Kevin's going to do what Kevin wants to do. I'm going to yeah. do what I want to do. And hopefully one of these days we can get some of that $100 million. <laughs> I ain't getting in the ring with nobody to do it, though. That, that's another thing. It's like, man is smart. He ain't going broke. I mean, it's just he's smart with his money. And he didn't put out there anybody want to challenge him. Come to the door. There's one nobody do it because boxing is that messed up. Got too many hands in the kitchen. True. Just interfering with this and that person fight. All right, real quick, I want to talk about uh, Navy midshipman uh, Cameron uh, Kinley. Uh-huh. Here's the way this works for people that don't know about the military. When you're in one of the service academies, 
and you're in a sport, you have the ability to put your, your uh, career on hold as a midshipman and you can join the NFL, Major League Baseball, wherever you come, or NBA, wherever you're coming out of. Uh, see David Robinson, that's why they named him the Admiral. Uh, the Navy has a longstanding tradition uh, of letting you do that if they believe you have a legitimate shot at being a pro. They denied him because they said that he does not have a legitimate shot. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers believe that he does have a legitimate shot. He may be a fifth string cornerback, but he will make the special teams. What are your thoughts on that, Kev? I think maybe bogus is trying to deny his dream. That's what he want to do, let him do it. They just, I mean, one less body to shoot a gun ain't going to kill nothing because he probably can't shoot to begin with. Like I learned from my little brother. All you got to do is hit 21 out of 50 and they consider you accurate. What the fuck? You are not accurate. You're not saving my life with that shooting percentage. So it just doesn't mean to play football. Like the, like the one guy said, they not going nowhere. Let them play. And when he gets done, he going to come do what he needs to do. Nothing more, nothing less. But yeah, just, you know, the thing. Because he's a midshipman in the Navy, if he doesn't go pro, he automatically becomes an ensign in the Navy, and he's got to serve whatever time he's contracted to serve before he can uh, step out of the military. And that's just going to mess him up. As a thing, though, he got drafted. And he put in his request to get in his, his career before he did that, and they denied him. So that's just on some more hate now shit. Like, you know, protecting the country more important than football. I beg the difference. I only got a few years I could possibly play football. I can protect the country until I'm blue in the face. <laughs> All right, everybody, uh, it's time to uh, we're gonna talk about collecting. And we got a uh, special guest in the house with us, uh, Phil Machaney. Phil, what's up, bro? Hey, Richard. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm really good. Hey, Kevin, how are you? Doing all right. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I've seen you a hundred times on here. <laughs> Until he decides hey, to quit. <laughs> all right. So the reason why I want to talk about collecting, to some degree or another, everybody collects something. Kevin is a collector. He may not realize it, but he's a DJ. How many songs you got? On the computer alone? I don't even know. I only want to draw an account. That, that makes him a collector. I know. It's my, uh, what my, I think it was about 550 gigs. I think it's about full. Damn. Yeah. I need okay. to switch it. I need to get a terabyte. I need to quit playing. Yeah. Yeah, you should. Um, I, as you can see behind me, I've got six scale action figures. That's one of the things I collect because I like Star Wars. What are the things that you like to collect, Phil? Uh, um, Star, well, Star Wars, um, among other things. Um, right now, we're, we're collecting um, pieces for, from ancient times. Uh, the Ancient Hand of Man is one of my, my favorites to collect. I, I have a lot of replicas. Um, just recently, our daughter gifted uh, Dory, my wife, a uh, third century BC uh, lamp. It's a, a Roman oil lamp. Huh. So, yeah, that, that's uh, that's kind of my passion right now. You know, Star Wars has always been my big passion, but um, you know, Ancient Hand of Man, I think it's, it's some of the coolest coolest things on the planet. Yeah, I mean, I've seen some of the uh, Greek collection stuff that you had. You had uh, texted me some photos. Nice stuff. Thank you. Statues <laughs> and books. I'm talking about old edition books. Oh, yeah. yeah I've, I've got a, uh, a copy of the Iliad and the Odyssey uh, that's over 110 years old. Damn. Yeah. yeah. I'm sitting here thinking <laughs> that, that mine was a good one just because it was made printed in the 70s 
and hey, hey, that's all right. before we were born. Yeah, that's cool. You know, it doesn't matter how old it is, the story is still the same, yeah. you know, that's and really that's awesome. what's important. <laughs> now, the thing about collecting is collecting can become expensive. What is the most expensive piece that you got? Oh, my gosh. I'd have to say the oil lamp would be it. It, it would be, uh, I, I can't say how much my daughter paid for it online, but uh, it was it was a pretty penny. <laughs> I'll bet it was. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the thing about collecting. It can become very costly. Um, it, it has to be something that you truly, truly love. Because sometimes once you go down that rabbit hole, it is extremely hard to get out. Um, for me, like I said, with 1-6 collectibles, a lot of my collectibles now are um, Hot Toys. Hot Toys is one of the best manufacturers of 1-6 collectibles because they are museum quality pieces. They look just like the real thing, only obviously one sixth the size um but because of that they are pretty expensive you know if you look in the case behind me you'll see some like ten dollar hasbro figures that i've had for years you know they just happen to be star wars too so they fit right in there but right next to them you might see like mando back there um i just put him up yesterday uh he ran 250 but Ooh. hey that's that's part of collecting right there uh thank god that uh sideshow collectibles has a payment plan else we would not have mando right <laughs> um one of my most expensive pieces um obviously can't see it it's out of out of frame now but chewbacca from the force awakens it was a hot toys piece and is the first piece that they ever did actually fur not the molded plastic so that ran about three bills so damn that was good but uh my favorite piece is this one right here this is uh my darth vader head here i've always loved this one because and i won't do it on, on this show but it breaks off into pieces so you can actually take the mask off and see all the internal workings on the uh, the whole structure and everything. And what's cool about it is it wasn't made by a toy company. This was made by Riddell, the NFL football helmet people. Oh, no way. Yeah, this is actually uh, high-grade ABS plastic and metal. This is the same stuff that they put into an actual football helmet. They wow. decided to try their hand at uh, making replica Star Wars masks. I believe they did Darth Vader, they did C-3PO, they did Boba Fett, and they did an X-Wing uh, fighter helmet. Wow. And That's uh, if you can find them, they will cost you a pretty penny nowadays. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I tracked down Boba Fett's helmet, but uh, I don't want to pay $275 for it, so... Uh, I had to let that go. <laughs> um, I do have a Grail piece, one that I would really like to get. I'd like to get K2SO from Rogue One. It was made by Hot Toys. I slept on it when it first came out. I was like, I don't want to pay two fifty. I don't want to pay three hundred dollars for it. Now, seven hundred is the cheapest that I can find it anywhere. Wow. So, needless to say. Ricky won't be getting that anytime soon. <laughs> uh, my yeah. only hope is when not the if Cassian... you want to look in the house, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. My, my hope is when the Cassian Andor show comes out on Disney Plus, they reproduce the uh, K two S O. Well, that'd be way cool. Yeah, I, I certainly you have hope a, uh, you have a real piece that, that you ever show. want to track down. Oh man, it's hard to say. I, I'd love to have. Um, an original hand solo blaster you know the um i, I saw is that, is that the d44 yeah the actual wooden handle that's the one 
Yeah. That's uh, I would love to have a replica of that. That was the, the most badass gun, you know, they could have gave anybody. Luke had the lightsaber, okay? But Han Solo had that blaster and it had crap on top of it and it had a scope. Like, when would you ever use a scope on a pistol? You know what? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You know, but it looked badass, you know? Well, if so, you yeah, just happen to have 900 and some odd dollars, I might know somebody that uh, <laughs> might be willing to part with it. Yeah, I can't be doing that. <laughs> Not no, if you want to live in the house, right? Yeah, that's right. That's a wife would kick my ass right out. <laughs> but Cam, uh, do you have any? Uh, I know you want that Lambo one day, but uh, aside from that, is there any Grail piece for you? Like when I was a kid, collecting for me was basketball cards. I used to collect those, and but you know, I said unfortunately. We moved back to Kansas City in such a haste. We left them in Springfield, and that was easily <laughs> that collection. Oh my God, I could be in another tax bracket right now because of that collection. Because I, I need just not even we, know. We share better. your pain. We share your yeah. pain. I think Phil yep. and me both could tell you about the three and three quarter inch line of Star Wars figures that we once both used to own. Um, yeah, I. I sold mine thinking, oh, Star Wars won't have any more films out. And then all of a sudden they put out episode one in 1999. And the rest is history. Uh, Phil, what happened to your old collection? Oh, well, I was growing up, you know, and uh, as uh, the good book says, put childish things behind me. And, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't have done that because I gave my entire collection to a, a kid he uh, he had autism and uh i was moving out of the apartment complex that you know we we shared and uh i said well here you go man all of this is yours he loves star wars but the amount of things that richard and i got as kids for christmas that's all we we didn't want anything else. On our Christmas list, it was straight up Star Wars. I think maybe we had some remote control Trans Ams at one point. Yeah. For Christmas. Yeah. Yep. I think I had but, the Ferrari. Oh, yeah, that's right. You did have the Ferrari. Right on. I had to have the Ferrari. We made little license plates for it. Yeah. Uh, what, what, Ke what Kevin felt about that Lambo, yeah. I had to have that Ferrari. Right. Mine was the Trans Am, you know? <laughs> yeah. Wasn't that the Smokey and the Bandit Trans Am? That's the Smokey and the Bandit yeah. Trans Am. Damn, man. <laughs> yeah, I just remember that because I had the Magnum PI Ferrari. I had right. to have that 348 GTSI. Nice. And uh, I remember <laughs> one Christmas in particular, you know, I wanted the Millennium Falcon. You remember that big Millennium Falcon playset? Oh, well, yeah. Unnecessarily huge. Yes. But uh, I had to have it. And I remember telling my mother, don't get me no underwear. Don't get me no socks. Don't give me nothing but that. I'd rather go downstairs in the morning and not have anything under the tree. Or you can get me that. Needless yeah. to say, that temper tantrum was unnecessary. Because <coughs> they had already thought ahead, had it promptly hidden in the house for months. And on yeah. Christmas morning... I, I was happy. I, I I was beyond ecstatic because it was there. I opened it up, held the instructions in my hand for all the five seconds, tossed them to the side. My dad was like, don't you need those? I'm like, nope, I know where everything goes. Right. Put it all together, put all the stickers on there. I was ready. So those were good times. Oh, yeah. What Christmas was that? That was, uh, was that 83, 84? No, no, this would have, because 83 would have been Jedi. Nah, yeah. this was uh, 80. This was in, around Empire Strikes Back. Right, because it had the Empire Strikes Back logo on it. Yeah. Remember, it never had, you never got a Millennium Falcon that had the actual Star Wars logo on it. It was Star Wars, the Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. Because they couldn't get it out fast enough, Hasbro 
couldn't get it out fast enough. Well, back then it was Kenner. Oh Hasbro yeah, it was. It, it was. It wasn't Hasbro. Forgive me. I who I apologize. <laughs> and the reason why I know that, I say that most of these are hot toys and most of them are Hasbro. Some mm -hmm. of them actually say Kenner. If you pick them up on the bottom of their foot, it will say Kenner with whatever I, the year is. I think yeah. Hasbro bought them out in the late 80s. Yep. Yeah. So just depending, and that's the reason why I won't get a hot toy if I actually have a uh, Kenner or a Hasbro figure. Because even though they're not as movie accurate, they're worth as much or more today simply because of how old they are and when they came out. So, nice. yeah, even though I got a realistic Luke Skywalker from The Last Jedi, I might have Ken Doll Luke up here. He's probably worth twice as much now. Paid right. fifteen dollars for him back in the day. He's worth three fifty now, and that's one of the things I like about collecting. If you uh -huh. stick with it and you keep your stuff, unlike uh -huh. twenty year old me who dumbass me who gave my three and three quarter collection away. <laughs> if you stick with it, you will have a good prized possession of stuff as long as you take care of it and nurture it. And, and you can't, you, you want to watch what you get too. It's not just about price, it's about room. And that's the reason why I went with the uh, one six scale because I thought about it. I thought about starting over with the three and three quarter inch line again, but God, there's so many of them out there. Right. I would be doing it forever and I would run out of space and it's just not important to me like that. Let me ask you. I got to be smart. What would you collect if you went to collect those? Would it be the Black Series? The, the Black Series has gotten better. But to me, because I started collecting 1 6 scale before the Black Series even came out, when I look at a Black Series figure, even though it's more superior um, than a 3 and 3 quarter, if you look at it next to a 1 6 scale, there's no comparison. Right. There's no, because a one six scale, I can open that door and put them in any pose I want, mimicking the exact human body. Even a black series, the joints yeah, only move true. so much. That's true. It doesn't articulate enough at all. I, I do have something to show you. It is uh -huh. a, uh, I think it's a remake from when the, uh, the new movies came out with episode one. But you remember this? Oh, yeah. I remember yeah. we had those. So Kevin don't know nothing about that. He came around at the long, wrong time. That, yeah. That, now this, what is that this hold? Uh, 40 of them? I think so. Um, this one's not in the greatest shape. I gave it to my kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they just one all the figures. But yeah, it's it's at least 40. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I remember that, and uh, if I remember correct correctly, even when we had them brand new back in the day, they didn't hold all the figures very well. No, if you had a didn't. tiny one like a Jawa or something uh -huh. small, it's going to slip through that through there when you open it up and fall anyway. Uh -huh. So exactly, that's exactly what just happened to mine. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't uh -huh. great with the designs, but it looked cool, you know. Exactly, and and, and, and believe it or not. Kevin, you would you wouldn't believe how much money that case is worth, and and that's the thing about it. It's it's a, it's about uh, not just monetary value though. It's about sentimental value. So, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, you also uh, didn't you collect Superman as well? Oh yeah, yeah. I've I've got uh, quite a Quite a few things, Superman. Uh, I, I never got one of the hot toys, Christopher Reeve. You I will, me I will say several that, times with if, if you oh. if you ever get a hot toy, you will never go back. Yeah, I know, I know, and that's you what I'm film of. accurate, museum quality pieces. You, it doesn't matter if you go Christopher Reeve, if you go with uh, Henry Cavill. Uh, they both look good. Uh, 
right now I'm going to say the uh, – did we lose Kevin? I, I guess we did. He's passed out. <laughs> <laughs> nerds, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Star Wars nerds. <laughs> exactly. But, My uh, dog. My hey, dog. Henry, Henry Cavill is, is going to be a little bit cheaper than uh, Christopher Reeve for obvious reasons because Christopher Reeve is yeah. with us. But uh, I think you could find one if you wanted for under 300 for mm. Reeve. But is he a better Superman than your boy? And that, to me, that's debatable. And here's the reason why. Um, if you look at... Um, Not separate, though. If, if you look at... Uh, I wish Kaz was on this show because he collects Batman. There's so many different types of Batman out there. Why does he collect the Waste of Space? Batman, Batman is tight. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, but, but what I'm saying is they're just different iterations of the same character. So you could have Cavill on one shelf and Reeve on the other shelf and, and, and you could have two badass displays. Right. Um, or a third option, they also make a you know comic accurate Superman, which is just the generic face uh, right. that looks like Superman. That's usually one of the cheapest, but uh, they all are fully articulated. You could also get them in statue form. Uh, I don't dabble in statues because they're usually almost twice the, the height. Um, and that's when space becomes behind? an issue. What? Ain't that a statue behind you? No, those are all one six scale figures. Those are completely posable. Those are only like 12 inches tall. A statue will be anywhere from 14 to 24 <laughs> inches tall. That makes no damn sense. <laughs> what makes no sense? It's a fucking statue. It's an action figure. Well, why y'all playing? <laughs> and that's the thing. The, these action figures are highly collectible. And there's a lot of uh, NFL players that uh, endorse Hot Toys, by the way, and Sideshow. They're in the collection. They, well. to do. they can go buy a collection. I ain't got shit to do. Well, that's, I'll that's stick what, to collecting. That's what you I'll do. Stick, you buy a collection. Yeah. I'll stick to collecting vinyl. I'll, I'll stick with that because the that's right record. That's, that's, a whole collection collection. Too. that's a collection yeah. too. There's nothing wrong that's with vinyl. That's a meaningful vinyl. collection. That's a what? Oh, that's a meaningful collection. It's meaningful in your eyes. And that's what I want to talk about next. Because you may not like the same music that I like, but it's meaningful in your eyes. You don't like the same movies that we like but it's meaningful in our eyes. And that's the thing about collecting. You collect what you love, and you love what you collect. Am I not right? I, I can uh, almost get on board with that. Yeah, I mean... It, uh, you it, it has out its there advantages, night. and it has its disadvantages. Obviously, cost is a big disadvantage, depending. One thing I will say about Hot Toys, they usually only release one they release one character that i like every six months to a year so it's not like i'm constantly getting one i've built this collection over, over the course of years years whether it be oh. tracking down action figures on ebay or yahoo or getting actual sideshow and hot toys action figures from their website so my, my question y'all is y'all clearly collect so who determines how much this, this shit costs? Who, who determines that? Because I was thinking some wild numbers for some of this stuff. So where, you know, you got some, like the Holy Grail, that could cost like a mill or, you know, just a stupid amount of money, just a couple hundred thou or a couple thou. Is it, y'all got like a booklet to have how much, or you just... Well, there's obviously, like there's obviously retail value. And retail value is what the manufacturer sets. What happens is, if it becomes a very popular item, then the collectors are who determine the uh, value after that. Uh, case in point, that K2SO that I said I wanted doubled in value because everybody that, everybody that bought it had it. And they said, look, if you want it, you're gonna have to pay double if you wanna take it off my hands. And people are doing that. Um, now, as people get them and sell them, 
the prices can go up. And as long as people are willing to pay those prices, that determines the value. If it was not a popular character and they said, man, I wouldn't pay 50 bucks for that. You probably see somebody on eBay trying to sell it for 50 bucks. It is, it's just the, the market determines the value. Oh, let, let me ask y'all this then. And I know you're probably going to say yes it is. Is there a black market for this? Um, I think yes. there is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's funny that you should mention that. <laughs> when I was talking to Phil about the Superman and the Christopher Reeve slash Henry Cavill characters, there are companies that do not have the license to make the product. And by the way, that goes into the initial price of the products. They're licensed by uh, these companies like Disney or Warner Brothers, and the actor gets a piece of it, and that's why they start off around $200. However, you've got a company like, we'll call them Three Zero or Company X or whatever. They make toys or action figures or statues that look just like these characters in these movies, but they give them a different name or something. Like, for example, let's say they wanted to do the Wolverine, but they can't call it Wolverine, but he looks like Wolverine. He's got his claws out on the statue and everything. They call it the Berserker. And then they sell it on the, on their market for whatever their price is. I know it's Wolverine. You know it's Wolverine. But because they don't have any Marvel licensing, they don't put anything Marvel related on the box, they can sell it like that. Or they call him Mr. Pokey Fingers, you know. Yeah, Mr. Pokey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my all right there. So, uh, question for you, Phil, since you got your, you know, extensive collection and everything, mm -hmm. which one would you take? Well, since you know, Star Wars is what I, I guess I can relate to, even though Star Wars is trash. If no. Hey, oh. hey, 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 hey! hey. <laughs> my bad. My bad. No, you're fine. <laughs> Perform trash, my bad. <laughs> if you had a chance to get, say, Dark Vader's mask from the movie, or from the the, the recent, or a Dark Vader from like the first one, which one is more valuable? Which one are you trying to get? Oh, it would be the original. The original okay. that in 1974 when George Lucas started filming. If you could get a hold of that costume that mask that would be worth well it, it, i don't think there'd be you can't a worse put a number that. on it you can't put a yeah. number on that yeah oh that shit was done in 74. And that's yeah. when they originally started molding and then casting and all that yeah. remember these movies were they start shooting two three years before they come out wow. i was four years old well but richard and i both were four years old when they first started and I think I wasn't uh, born came out in 77, yet. right? Yeah, came out in 77. Yeah. I was one then the following year. I was no, I was born the following in the middle of the following year. Wow, right on, man. Yeah. May 1977. So, so you telling me if you had the say the lightsaber or whatever from the original, there's no value on it, just like a, a estimated, or you just Really don't know unless you put it in an auction or something. Oh, you can auction it. There's a value, but it's yeah. it's more than we can. Let's put it this way: you don't have enough zeros that you can put on this screen for one of those pieces. It would go in the millions, not the thousands. It, you know, I learned from uh, my boss. I worked uh, at a baseball card store in Kansas City at Bannister Mall, uh, Collector's yeah. Kingdom. If you remember that. Yeah, I uh, I asked my boss, "Why is this worth so much more than this?" And he goes, "This is it's it's only what willing someone is willing to pay for it is you know determines that value. You know, you can put the hype on it, you know, and you can create fandom for it, and it becomes a cultural icon, uh, a cool icon." like Star Wars has become, and you can put any amount of money you want on it. You know, if, you, if you're a fine crafter and you have figurines like Richard does there, you know, from, uh, what was it, Hot Toys or Sideshow or? 
I got but, both, but most of them are hot to yeah. hey, Just like in ancient times, if your vase was prettier than the other vendor, you know, down the street's vase, then, you know, hey, I use pigments from uh, shellfish and, uh, you know, squirrels or whatever ah, to yeah. make my orange and my green, you know. <laughs> Another good example, Kev, yeah. would be if I came to you and I said, hey, you want to buy this baseball for $10? No, I don't want to buy no fucking baseball for $10. All right, you want to buy this Barry Bonds home run baseball? That yeah. price is going to go up. It's um, like, uh, what was that movie when he was like, yeah, my dad got this baseball and it said, babe, or something. they like, Ruth? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> they was playing with that baseball. <laughs> yeah, I'd be sick. I would be sick if my kids were playing with my stuff. <laughs> Being an Oakland fan, there's never going to be anything of value. So my my next question, you know, since both y'all collect things or whatever, have either one of y'all had anything that you you kick yourself that you passed up on? That it was like it was in your hand and you second guess yourself out of it. Then later in that like car drive, whatever, you was like, damn it, I tripped. I should have got that. Richard, you go first. <laughs> I mean, nothing that was really in my hands. The only thing I can think of is pointing back to that K2SO uh, robot. Uh, it wasn't in my hand, but I was on the website. I could have hit the button and ordered, but for whatever reason, I said, nah, I don't really want to spend that kind of money right now. And, you know, flash forward to today, it's more than two times that value. So I'm SOL. Oh, God. I, uh, I wish I would have kept my George Brett rookie baseball cards from Tops. Oh, wow. Yeah, you remember those? It, Tops? Yeah, that, that would have been worth a lot of money right there. Nasty ass gone that came with it. I put five of them in the spokes of my bicycle tires because I like the way it sounded. Yes, and now you're kicking yourself. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You know, <laughs> I, I hope you still have that bike. That way, you can at least get something out of it. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's just like with me. Um, I, I lived in Springfield for about three years. That's when I did the whole. That's when my mom got us into basketball, collecting cars, all that. So that me, and my mom, and my dad. I mean, me, and my dad, and my little brother. We had four books. It was about no it was five books between us. I had two, my brother had two, my dad had one filled with basketball cards. All the greats that have retired that are Hall of Famers now, rookie cards, all-star cards. I mean, fucking Upper Deck don't even make cards anymore. That's how right. bad these cards are. But the creme de la creme, we all had a Jordan rookie card. And my brother and me both, because when Dominique Wilkins, you know, they still would tour in, uh, versus going overseas. Me and my brother both had a Reebok autograph poster of Dominique Wilkins. Oh. Just left them like they wasn't up. Damn. Yeah. And considering he didn't got a ring in the NBA and overseas, how much that poster would be right now? And he's still with Reebok? Uh, stuff like that just made you want to just want to make want to go to my mom's like, why do we have to rush? <laughs> I left college tuition behind. Yeah, that, that, oh, yeah, that does suck. I mean, that's one of the things about being a collector when you get older. You learn to take your time, plan things out. And and like I said, if, if Hot Toys and Sideshow didn't have payment plans, it would just be a no-go. Because um, you got to be smart about it. And, and one of the things about taking my time and, and, and paying on it or whatever I decide, do I really want it? Do I really need it? I'm never going to make that same mistake again about walking away from something and then kicking myself later. I'll, I'll weigh the options now. We couldn't do that as well when we were kids, but uh, lesson learned. What can you do? And oh, by the way, Kevin, just for you, I do have plenty of uh, Raiders memorabilia that's of value, especially my signed Bo Jackson helmet. 
What? As he probably he probably signed when he was in his Royals uniform. That's the only reason why it's worth it. <laughs> no. He, he, no actually that's signed right. it, he actually signed it at a um, sports memorabilia show in Kansas City uh, at the Overland Park Convention Center. That's a surprise because he don't do none of that stuff. Bo no, is the won't. most – I don't know who's more anti-social, him or Barry Sanders, when it comes to they, they sports career. You don't see them do anything. Yeah, it's very rare now. Uh, now you can get you can get him uh, on the bike. He usually does the annual Bo Bikes Bama uh, for charity. But right now he's more into his uh, other business affairs. He said he rarely even watches football games now. I think they'd be lying when they be saying that. Football come on like six days a week. How can you get away from? Him? What are you watching? Murder She Wrote or something? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, right, um, I, I, I think that you might be right, but I think that you might not be because if it's something that you used to do, you love doing, and it got taken away from you, it might sting a little. I'm not saying he yeah. didn't watch any football, but he probably only watches the highlights or piece of the game here, piece of the game there. That shit sets you for life. You better appreciate it. All right, we got less than four minutes left. We got like two, three more questions. Go for uh, it. Phil, question. So since yeah. I know Richard, you more in the, the little figurines and stuff, and I know I feel like you got a little bit of everything. Mm-hmm. Worry about climate, keeping everything in pristine condition. If you got like a lot of papers and stuff, so do you have like a uh, do you have something like particularly put things in? How do you preserve certain things? Oh sure, well I have a, a comic here from uh, the 1980s that I, I do keep behind plastic. I don't know if you guys can see That'd that. Real good. Yeah. She yeah. looks brand new. Yeah. It's it's one of those. I one thing I'm I'm especially proud of. I've kept in plastic for years. Since we're talking cards and stuff, these are my Wonder Bread cards. Now each one of these cards was in the bottom of a bag of Wonder Bread in the nineteen seventies. Check out the corners on those. Crisp. Very crisp. Yeah. That's what you want in a card. And there is only a limited... You know how many bags of bread I had my mom buy? <laughs> <laughs> Especially oh, when you no kept mom. getting the same card. Right. Right. You get the Stormtroopers. You'd be like, God damn it. I don't want another Stormtrooper card, you know? <laughs> and, and I remember that because I used to have the tops Star Wars card. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, they made them, too. Well. But as far as keeping stuff uh, climate control, like I said, I, I have a little bit of every, or you said, I have a little bit of everything. It's not going to be forever. You know, this stuff will, when I'm older, won't probably be around or, you know, I'll, I'll pass it on. But, you know, I don't have anything that valuable yet to be able to put, like Richard does in a case, man, you know. That's impressive shit, you know? <laughs> well, you know what? These cases are from Ikea. They are a detox. They're only like 60 nice. bucks a case. So I got four cases one day when I was in Kansas City. said, let me bring these back because this is what I'm going to store them in. And I went to uh, Home Depot, got some weather stripping to put on the doors to keep dust out. Wow. And I keep this room and the previous office that they were in nice and cool, cool and dry. Humidity will kill anything whether yeah. it be a collection yeah. or just something on your shelf. The only problem that I've had with any of my figures, you can't see him, he's way up top, but Darth Vader, the old Darth Vader, uh, this was this one's one from Hasbro, uh, not Kenner, so it's not that old, but part of his suit, his pants, the leather, because it was pleather, is starting yeah. to deteriorate. Oh, shit. So all you can do is, yeah. you know, Put something on them, spray them, shine them down, like keep it from happening. But I keep everything behind glass now. Yeah. What's one thing if you could get it tomorrow you want in your collection? Sure, I'm I would have Millennium Falcon back. Yeah, I would like to have that back. That would be awesome. I All right, same to you, Richard, real quick. What what would you, if you could get it tomorrow, what would it be? Uh, no, I said it. I'd like to have that Millennium Falcon back. Or if I could get that uh, Boba Fett helmet to uh, go on the shelf next to the Darth Vader helmet that I got. Oh, okay. I bet. Right, Phil, thanks so much for being with us, man. I appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you. And everybody. No problem, man. Okay, guys, that's all the time we have for today. Uh, Phil, thanks for stopping by. Got to get you on again, brother. 
Kev, another great one. Guys, everybody that's watching, make sure that you like, share, subscribe. We appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, drop us a comment. Let us know what you like, what you don't like, what you want to see in the future. And as always, stay positive, stay blessed. I'll see you again soon.